Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you one way to send and receive files across a network. So let's get started. Okay, so the tool that we're going to use is called Woof, which is a very small and simple web server used for transferring files across a network. So as you can see, I've got two virtual machines open and they're connected using an internal network. So the first step is to download Woof onto one of these virtual machines. So I'm just going to open up a terminal and I'm going to type in sudo apt-get install woof and enter my password and yes I want to install it and there we go we have woof installed now so I'm just going to cd over to the desktop and clear the screen and just move this terminal just a bit so to actually send a file using woof, all you need to do is supply woof with the path to the file. So woof-test.doc and hit enter and it will start up serving that file to any recipient with a link. But as I have two network interface cards plugged into this machine, I'm going to have to tell woof which IP address I want to serve this file on. So to do that, I'm just going to use the dash I option for IP address and enter the IP address of this machine on this network, which is 10.10.10.2. .10 and we need to select a port number. So I'm just going to use port 121234 and the name of the file. So woftest.doc and hit enter. And we're now serving that file on this link. So if I just copy this link here, and open up a web browser on the receiving machine and enter the link and hit enter. You can see that we can now download this file. So let's just save that. And there it is on my desktop here. And as you noticed, after the file was sent, woof closed down. We can use another option, which is the dash C option, which stands for count if we wanted to send this file a number of times to multiple machines. So if we set the count to say two, woof would close down after this file had been sent twice. You can also send directories using woof. So let's just send the directory on my desktop. So woof directory, and let's just take out the count option. And I'm going to replace that with the lowest case Z, which will tar and gzip the directory. So now if we hit enter and go over to our other machine, again the same link applies, hit enter. You can see that we're now receiving a gzipped tarball of the directory. So let's just save that. And there it is on my desktop. You can also use different forms of compression. So the instead of dash Z or lowercase Z, we can use the dash J option, which will create a tarball and then use bzip2 compression, or the uppercase Z, which will create a tarball with zip compression, or the lowercase U, which will just create a tarball of our directory. We can also use with to receive files across a network. So, if I just delete the end of that and change this last option to an uppercase U, what will happen is Woof will host an upload form. So if we open up our web browser on our other machine, you can see that we have an upload form here. So if I click browse and let's just send back that gzipped file here. So open and upload. You can see that I've now received it on my other machine. So as you can see, you can use Woof to send and receive files and directories, and any computer that has a web browser is able to send and receive files to you. They don't necessarily have to be running Linux, so you could actually send and receive files to, say, your phone, or a Mac OS computer, or even a Windows machine. Now the final option that I'm going to show you is the dash S option, which allows you to share Woof to other Linux machines. So if we just type in Woof with our IP address and a port number, and then we use attack S at the end, Woof is actually hosting a copy of itself at this link. So if we navigate to that link on our other machine and hit enter, we can download a binary file. So if we just save that file 
Okay, so now you can see that on my desktop here, I've got a copy of Woof. So I'm just going to open up a terminal and I am going to change directory to my desktop. Just move this a bit. So the first step to installing the shared copy of Woof is to change the permissions. So chmod 755 Woof. And we're going to need to move that up into, so sudo move woof to forward slash usr forward slash bin and enter my password there we go and now we have woof installed on this machine so let's just type in woof dash h for help there we go we have woof ready to go so as you can see woof is really easy to use and useful I tend to find myself using it a lot with mobile phones as I don't always have the correct USB cable to hand and it's just faster to send files up like that. So that's brought us to the end of this tutorial on Woof. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow Linux Leech on Google+, Facebook and Twitter. Links are on the screen now. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.